beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video we'll be running through the benefits of upgrading your brewing system's pump to one that is more powerful and also showing you how to do it yourself. Trust me, if I can do it then you can too. So let's get started. Here is the pump that is supplied by Standard with the Bruzilla Generation 4 35 litre and 65 litre brewing systems. Like the vast majority of all-in-one brewing systems pumps, it offers 6 watts of power. Here is a side-by-side -side look alongside our upgrade pump which is 25 watts. This is actually the pump that is standard with the 100 litre Brazilla Gen 4 systems. So you can understand that if we replace a 6 watt pump with a 25 watt pump then this is going to be a size or upgrade in terms of power. But you may be wondering what this actually equates to in real terms of results. So let's now have a look at that. As you can see from the specifications, our original 6 watt pump has a maximum capacity of moving 12 litres of liquid per minute, whereas the upgrade 25 watt pump has a maximum capacity of 19 litres per minute. So in terms of your mash, you are potentially moving 7 litres of liquid per minute more than you were before the upgrade, which is rather a lot. You may feel that this presents an advantage, however your 6 watt original pump was already offering a good level of flow, in keeping with the volume that can flow through your grain bill within your malt pipe. By using a more powerful pump, you will need to regulate this extra power via the valve within your recirculation pipe to avoid overflow. However, there are some key advantage areas as this extra speed will also mean a much faster transfer time to your fermenter as long as you are using the pump to assist the transfer via the system's tap or perhaps via a counterflow or plate chiller. Certainly having a shorter brew time will appeal to some brewers, I am sure. Also, if you are someone who uses a whirlpool arm during your brews, then apparently you will see a large level of improvement to the end result. This will depend on the brewing system that you use though, for example, the Bruzella Gen 4 systems enjoy the benefits of a bottom dead centre drain, as well as a false bottom, negating the need for a whirlpool. However, even if a whirlpool is valid for your system, then I'm not sure if it is as much fun as using a drill with an appropriate attachment, which is my method of choice. The other key advantage is that a higher power pump will also have a higher vertical lift, which is also known as max head. Here you can see that the 6 watt pump has a rating of 2.1 meters and the 25 watt pump has a rating of 3.4 meters. In a nutshell this refers to the pump's capacity to push liquids upwards, which is certainly very useful when it comes to transfer. Do keep in mind that when you're at the maximum of your rating then you have no flow at all, so depending on your uses having this extra lift can certainly make a lot of difference in speed of transfer or if transfers are actually going to work at all. Having this extra grant is also useful if you're using a counter flow or plate chiller too, of course. Here is the underside of the brewing system that I'll be upgrading the pump on. I want to make it clear that I'm not by any means an electrician, but feel that the content I'm sharing with you here refers to light tasks that really anyone can perform. Ensure that the power lead is removed from the mains before you undertake these tasks, and accept before going any further that you will be performing this upgrade at your own risk entirely, and that I'm not going to take any responsibility for any damage you do to yourself, or anything else for that matter. This is a Bruzilla Generation 4 65 litre system and as you can see Kekland have made it very easy to access the pump on this generation compared to Generation 3 and downwards, as well as many other all-in-one brewing systems. So depending on which brewing system you are upgrading will depend on the work that you will need to do to access the pump. Usually there will be a metal plate covering the entire bottom which you will need to remove first. Before you get started make sure you have some suitable tools with you and perhaps also a mobile phone or camera in case you want to take photos for your own reference later so that when you put it all back together again it's back as it was except for the pump change. I suggest starting by removing the screws that hold your pump in place. You can expect one or two each side of the pump. You can then remove the silicon hosing that connects the pump to the system more easily by hand by removing the clips that are commonplace as shown here. When you remove the lower hose, do not be surprised if you have a little liquid join the party. This is normal. Let's now remove from the electrical side. In the Brazilla's case, these are protected within this box and we will need to move all of the screws to get inside. With the lid now removed, we can now see all of the wiring, including the wiring that is coming into the box from the pump itself. For clarity, this is confirmed on screen now. 
by pulling back this cover we can gain access to the terminals so that we can then remove the wiring from the pump. This starts in this case by clipping the tyres holding the wiring together so that we can identify which wires relate to the pump. As you can imagine this is a very easy process, there are two wires to remove from these terminals. These two wires are then unscrewed from their respective terminals, in this case there are opposite ends of the connector block. There is also a third wire coming from the pump to the body of the unit which is the earth wire, this is also removed. To finish removing this wiring in this case there are some plastic connectors to undo that secure the wiring onto the electrical box. You can then freely remove the wiring from the box totally and remove the pump fully too. All easy stuff for sure. Naturally as you go through this removal process make sure that you keep all of the screws and fittings as you will need these for the replacement pump fitting later. So now we have the job of adding the upgrade pump and of course making sure that we put the right wires in the right places. However this is generally made very easy as the wiring will generally be at the length to suit when it comes to pumps for brewing systems when obtained from the company who makes the system. This is clearly seen when you compare both pumps and their wiring as I'm showing on screen now. In this case both pumps have short lengths that have a spade connector that can only fit into our nearest terminal on the board, which is our neutral. Then a longer length that has a circle connector that we know from removal is the earth connector that goes to the body. Then we have remaining two long lengths that have a spade connector which can reach the furthest terminal which is for active, completing the wiring. To prepare your upgrade pump for fitting be sure to add the plastic parts before you add the wiring into the box in the case of the Bruzilla. Other brewing systems will very likely have something similar. This is a simple case of slipping them onto the wires and then back onto the main cord itself. When fitting the replacement pump back into the system I suggest that you start by adding the silicon hosing back first. Make sure this is well fitted as adjustment at this point is easier. You can then add your wiring, in this case into an electronics box. On the Bruzilla Gen 4 units this is also the time to add that plastic connector that will secure the wiring in the box. You can then add the two wires back onto your connector block and be sure to ensure they are connected securely and firmly. Then the earth wires can then be added back onto the body. I then did some finishing up and tidying up and the wiring side was done, so I then added the cover back onto the electrics box. It was then just a case of screwing the pump to the underside of the brewing system to finish the installation. It is not often that I'm underneath my bruiser at a 65 litre, so I figured that while I was at it I would give it a quick clean up to finish the job properly. We are not quite done yet though, as it was then time to test the pump at first with just water, and then give it a clean too. This does not need to be anything lengthy, but I would recommend that you add some cleaner to your system and do your usual cleaning step at 55 degrees Celsius, which is the equivalent of 131 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see there is no need to add much water for your testing or for your cleaning. Once you have finished the first cleaning step, then make sure you do the same with just heated water to remove all of the cleaner so that your system is ready for your next brew. This now completes this guide. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing. For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!